let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Karen Kaufman, and I am a double board certified allergist, immunologist, and internal medicine physician. And I um, help patients here in Northern Virginia by providing personalized and very high value care. And so what I'm gonna start with in telling you about my entrepreneurial journey um, is a tale of hard work, determination, and perseverance. And that really started for me at an early age when I was back in undergraduate and I participated in a lot of extracurricular activities. And so my focus was here and there and everywhere. And it wasn't always as much as it should have been on some of my studies and I struggled a little bit. And I, um, I had to deal with a couple of very early objections that were very formative for me at the time. First of all, I had a pre-medicine advisor who after meeting with him told me that he thought I would be better off if I sought out a different profession and he didn't think medicine was for me. And I thought, what kind of advising is this? I really think you're not getting me here. So I put in more hard work and I really tried to you know, do everything I could and, and got myself into medical school. Um, I had applied for a scholarship at the time. My, my parents told me, okay, great, you wanna to go to medical school. Now you can figure out how to um, pay for it. And so I applied for a scholarship, a health profession scholarship through the military. And initially I got a response that they did not find that I was physically qualified to be a Navy physician because of a prior injury I had as a high, high school athlete. And so I, I thought to myself, gosh, like all of these things are really trying to stand in the way of me achieving my dreams. And so I started a letter writing campaign, which opened up a congressional investigation. And for the first time in the history of the scholarship, they overturned their decision and, um, and I was able to become part of the military. For me, this was a very important time in my life, <clears throat> excuse me, um, which the, all of this occurred right around the time of 9-11. So I had this very, very strong commitment to country and wanting to serve others. So, so I went into medical school and, and had a lot of success and studied hard and continued to be determined to, to reach my goals. I ended up getting the internship and residency of my choice and learned internal medicine um, so much that when I, when I graduated from residency, like I didn't really know what to do next. And so I went back to my office and they said, well, why are you here? I, I said, I'm not really sure why I'm here. Like, I just don't really know where else to be. And so, you know, I feel like when, when you spend that much time of dedicated hours um, learning your craft and learning your profession, it just becomes a part of you. So, um, so I graduated from residency. I took my first job as an attending and um, I was in a position of teaching for residents and medical students. And I had a busy internal medicine practice. And after a couple of years, um, I decided I wanted to become a subspecialist and um, ended up applying for fellowship for allergy and clinical immunology. And so all of my hard work through all of those years paid off. I got the fellowship of my choice and really found a ton of success and learning and pushing myself outside of my boundaries. Um, allergy and clinical immunology is a um, mixed profession of medicine and pediatrics. And so I ended up training in a program that was primarily pediatrics because I didn't know anything about kids. And so, um, so I challenged myself and that was an opportunity for growth. After my time in fellowship, I went back to serve the military as, as a um, attending physician again, training more residents and medical students and really you know, optimizing my experience. But what's interesting about military medicine is as you progress in time and in rank, your responsibilities are more so starting to stretch outside of your clinical practice. And you start taking on more leadership roles and sitting in on meetings and joining committees and and it's not really optional. It's sort of like your expectation. And, and for me, my joy is in clinical practice. And so I wanted to um, really think about, you know, where I was at and what I was doing and what I wanted my career to look like. So after 10 years in the military, I, I thought that the grass looked a little bit greener on the other side. And I decided to resign my commission and go into private practice. Um, but the grass wasn't really greener. I thought it would be, and it wasn't. And so I joined this multi-specialty group practice where there was another allergist who retired after about a year and a half, leaving me to be by myself amongst some other specialists. But what I was finding in this practice 
was not that same experience of camaraderie and support that I really had very strongly through my 10 years in the military. Instead, um, I found unreasonable expectations to build a practice without any assistance of marketing. Um, I found that I was chastised or even, you know, with constant disappointment that I wasn't producing enough volume for the practice, regardless of the fact that I wasn't given administrative support or nursing support. And I was just expected to figure it all out myself. Um, there was no camaraderie in the practice. Amongst the fact that there were other physicians there, we would all independently go about our day, so much so that I would come in and leave and sometimes wouldn't even speak with one another. Like there were no good mornings. How are you? How is that even possible? Um, it was really hard. And I really didn't enjoy the career that I had, um, that I'd given up so much for. And I really felt like I was stuck. Um, and so while I was starting to experience all of the symptoms of um, burnout and depression, my clinical practice was still thriving in that I was taking excellent care of patients and the other physicians who were referring patients to me were thrilled. And in the five years that I had been in the practice, four of those years, I was voted to the national capital area's top doctors list never to once have been congratulated or even acknowledged by my practice. So I found that it was time to make a change. Initially, I thought that the problem was me and I needed to make a, a change internally, but it wasn't. The problem was where I was at and I just was in the wrong place. So what I needed to do was to seek out a new opportunity. Excuse me, my mouth is so dry. Sorry, to see out a new opportunity, and I started to really weigh my options. And what I found was that the best fit for me was to go into solo practice. All of this occurred at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. So at the time, my employer had reduced all of our schedules to part time, and so now I had more time to figure it out. So that's what I did. I started reading and listening to podcasts and calling everybody I knew who was in private practice themselves and trying to get as much tips and tricks and help and guidance that I could find. I ended up um, attending a virtual conference at the time that was called the Back to Busy Summit, which was a conference that was designed for people in private practice. And I learned a tremendous amount while I was listening to this conference. And by far, the best lecture was given by Dr. Una. And it was about how to recession-proof your practice, which just came back around on the podcast, by the way. So you catch episode 71. It's awesome. So I thought to myself, gosh, this lady is genius. She has figured it out. And I, I really listened to her and I listened to her introduction and I heard myself, Dr. Una and I trained at the same time and we've been in practice the same amount of time. But while I've been trudging along, she's been growing her pediatrics practice and scaling the practice and having wild amounts of success. And I thought to myself, I need to find this woman and do everything she says. This is how I'm gonna build the practice. So that's when I started listening to the Entree MD podcast, of course, which became the staple in my car as I motored through all 71 episodes, so much so that my children get in the car and they say, mommy, is that Dr. Una? Mm-hmm, it is, yep. And so, we listened to all the episodes and I learned everything and I soaked it all in. And so um, at the end of the summer, I think it was in the beginning of um, September, I decided to join the Entree MD Business School. And just in the last couple of months, I have learned so much. Initially, I was just really soaking it in and internalizing everything because I hadn't yet given notice to my practice that I was leaving. So I didn't want to put anything out there in the world and burn bridges and do things that I wasn't supposed to do. So I just, I just soaked it in and learned. But at the end of September, I gave notice to my boss that I was going to be leaving. He actually thought that I was sitting down for a productivity meeting with him. And I was kind of like, mm -hmm, nope, we're not doing that today. Um, and so, um, so I gave my notice. And since the end of September, um, I have been building and building and building and learning from um, all of the lessons of marketing through social media, um, I learned how to make a website. I've utilized the tools of my great helpers in the Entree MD Business School to learn how to make a landing page and, a, and an email list and all of this stuff. And so I've been 
releasing breadcrumbs and starting to paint the picture of the practice that, that I want to have. And so in the course of the last about two months since I've been doing this, I've already built my email list to over 100 patients who have reached out to me to schedule appointments as soon as I open in January. I know, I'm so excited. So, um, so it's been fabulous. So, you know, what I want to say is for anybody who has struggled, for anyone who couldn't find their way, this is the path to success. It's find people who are doing what you want to do and learn from them, embrace it. Um, you know, if I have one piece of advice to give, it's to embrace the habits of successful entrepreneurs. It's to set goals and to work feverishly toward, toward achieving those goals. It's to have a vision of what's ahead of you. I've literally never made a vision board in my entire life. I keep it right here next to my desk. I look at it all the time. It is like the driving factor of what I'm doing every single day. Um, the, next, uh, the next concept is to build a powerful network. This is the network, guys. It's the EntreMD Business School. It's each and every one of us who support each other, who help each other grow and develop over time. We embrace the failures that we've had, we learn from them, and we celebrate all of our successes. So if I can leave you um, with just one more thing, um, if you know anyone in the Northern Virginia area who needs an allergist immunologist, you can send them my way. Um, my website is up, but don't check it out till next week because my last day of work in, in, as, a, as an employed physician is next week on Tuesday, and the new website's gonna launch on Wednesday, and I'm so, so, so excited for the next couple of months moving forward toward building the career of my dreams. Thank you.